time. I'm hoping to keep this talk under 15 minutes, and I'll take five minutes of question at the end. So, hello again. I suppose you're starting to get pretty familiar with me and my start right now. So, right now we're getting into the nitty gritty. Uh, we started today. I told you about how I'd ventured from being a user to being a maintainer. And right now I'm going to get the chance to actually tell you more about the project that I'm maintaining, which is called Org Rome. So it would, have, it would have had a better impact if I didn't scroll the page. But you know, sadly, I'm out of tea. It's getting late in Europe, and I'm starting to get tired. <laughs> so what I'm going to do during this talk is just to do really a survey for people who do not know what Orgrom is about. Some of you might, ha might have, you know, whilst browsing Reddit, found a topic about Orgrom and thought to yourself, oh, that looks interesting, but you know, I have my own workflow and I kind of don't need to change anything about it. You know, I'm completely fine using my very, very large file, or I'm completely fine having my database of notes, which is I've been accruing for like 10, 20, 30 years or so. So what I want to do during this talk is both to present to you what Orgrom is about, if you are in this group of people who do not know what Orgrom is about, but would like to know more but also for people who have close to no experience with Emacs and org mode and who's just found their way, you know, they wanted to find a system to write their notes, basically, and, you know, they discovered this little tool, which is called Orgrome, and they'd like to know more about this. So I've got 13 minutes to convince you to use Orgrome. So if we go in a very broad strokes, what is Orgrome? Orgrome is a way for you to manage backlinks inside org mode. And the key word in what I've just said is links. Now, there is a principle behind org roam, which is called the Zettelkasten method, which you can see written right there. It's a German word, which means a slip box. If you remember, in whole libraries, you had, actually, I believe if I scroll, I should have an example of this. Yes. So this is a slip box. Basically, in all libraries, you used to have all the references to the books that the library used to have inside those boxes. And they call slip boxes because you can insert stuff into the boxes and you can remove stuff out of the boxes. Now, basically, if I try to summarize as simply as I may what the Zettelkast method is about, it's about having a way to work with your notes which considers elements of knowledge as atoms, so as something that is individable, like a single file. And you consider that in order to build knowledge, you have to combine atoms together so that when you have one atom, another atom, if you link them together, you have a complex thought or a complex molecule, OK? Don't quote me on the chemistry, by the way. I shall remind you, I'm an English major. I have no idea what I'm talking about. So how does it work as far as a note-taking system is concerned? And to do so, I'm just going to switch really quickly to my Emacs, if I may. So I'm just going to screen share onto my Emacs. Just give me a second to get the windows all right. OK, it's loading up. Oh, no, I think Firefox has crashed again. OK, so you're going to have to give me a second. Oh, I need to figure this out. OK. <laughs> so everything is frozen right now, just to tell you. So you're going to have to deal with my lovely voice. Uh, I mean, can you confirm that if I switch to a new TTI, you can still hear me? So can you still hear me now? OK, so I'm going to have probably to kill Firefox and log in again. So I'm sorry, it's going to cost us two minutes, but I'm going to try to be as fast as I can, OK? OK, no problem. Thanks. All right. I guess no event is a good one without one or two technical difficulties. So <laughs> I guess this is. Um, our share of technical difficulties this year. No problem.
All right, guess who's back? It's not Brittany, it's just me, sadly. So you're going to have to make do with me. <laughs> Welcome back. Well, thank you. I'm just going to turn back on the camera, if I may. All righty. Okay. And I'm going to make myself a presenter, and I'm going to share my screen with you. Sleepbox testing, allow. So if my calculations are correct, you should be able to see my monitor right now. Um, yep, but not your webcam feed. Not my webcam feed. OK, so I'm going to stop it. Sorry for the little delay, folks. You know, it's uh, the show must go on. Can you see it now? Um, not yet. Still not. Damn it. Can I stop it? OK, yeah, so I I'm going to. Yeah, maybe try like sharing a webcam first. All right, I'm back now. All so right. I'm going to share my webcam first. OK. All righty. So can you confirm whenever you've got my webcam working? Let's see. I don't see it yet, unfortunately. Is oh, it loading up? Yeah, it's coming up. Yep, I can see Good. it. Awesome. All right. OK, we're back on track. <laughs> I've got still eight minutes left to do, so I might have to add a couple of minutes to my talk, if you don't mind, and shave yeah. off some questions. OK. Do you want to share? OK. Yeah, yep. I'm on my way, too. All right. All right. So please forget whatever, whichever muted. technical difficulties we might have, have had for the last three, four minutes, but we're back on track now. So uh, all grown. What is it and how does it work? So I was telling you all about atoms and I was telling you about links, but how does it work concretely? So right now, what you're seeing on your screens is a slip box, which is what we, the fancy word that we use to designate your folder where all your notes are going to be living. So you have here, and I hope you can see my uh, cursor. Yes, you can. So we have a file which is called index.org. And the good thing is, as you might have garnered by the fact that it finishes by that org, is that it is just an org mode file. So I can create a heading, I can create another heading, and everything works as you would expect it to. It is completely, it's just an org mode file at the end of the day. So now, what can we do with this? Now, I've told you about links, and you do know that org mode has links. So what we're going to do is that we are going to create a new file. So we're going to go back to our directory. And what I'm going to do is that we have a special command. So actually, let me just show you my command. I might help you a little bit see what I'm doing. Uh, wait, which is the buffer? Uh, log mode? Yes, Emacs log. So now on the right side of the monitor, you'll be able to see the commands that I'm using. If you don't mind, in order to have as much real estate as possible, I'm going to make it a little bit shorter. Smaller, I should say. Is it not too small? Yeah, I believe it's good. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to run a command in Orgrome, which allows me to create a new note. So I'm going to use my key binding, which is not this one, definitely. And I'm going to create a new file, which is in a great tradition of examples in programming. I'm going to call foo. Right. So at the bottom, in the bottom buffer, I should say, you are seeing the file foo, which is, as you can see here, a capture buffer, just like you would have in org mode. Now, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to validate this file. And now you see that we are in the file foo. And the good thing is that I can start writing without having to worry about anything else. And I was going, I was going to, say, to say that I'm showing off about my typing skills, but I did make mistakes. So, well, nobody's perfect, right? So now we do have this foo file, and we're going to go back to the index. So let's go back to the directory. We're going to refresh the file. As you can see, we have a file which is called foo, and we have the index. So now, what I'm going to do 
is that I'm going to insert a link to this file. So we're going to run another orgrom command, which you can see here, orgrom insert, and I'm going to insert a link to the file foo. And as you can see, it has now appeared. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to save the file, and now I'm going to show you the little thing I told you about backlinks before. So I'm afraid I'm going to have to hide the commands for now, but don't worry, they'll be back. And I'm going to show you the side buffer. So it is the buffer that you see on the right side of your screen. And right now it's telling you that index does not have any backlink, which is normal. But if we follow the link foo, now you see something different on the right side. So as you can see on the left side, we're back inside the file foo. But on the right side, we have something showing up. One backlink in the file index. In under the heading, her heading, you have the file, sorry, the link foo. And you can just open the link and you will be brought exactly where it is. So, okay, so that was one thing. Now, just to make sure that you've understood properly, I'm going to go back to the index. I'm going to create a second file. So now I'm going to use a command that is slightly different. So let me just uh, show you the commands on the right. I'm going to run the command orgrom insert, and I'm going to, ens to enter a file which is called bar. So again, at the bottom, you can see that I have a new file, bar. I'm going to validate this file. OK. I'm going to save index.org. And now if we go in bar, and if I show you the links on the side, you can see that exactly the same, we have a link. Now, just to make the pictures complete, inside the file bar, I'm going to insert a link to foo. I'm going to save. I'm going to go to the file foo. And now on the right side, you can see that we have two backlinks. Now, you're going to tell me, yeah, thank you, Leo, but what's the point? Well, the thing is, it might, sound, it might seem very simple, what I've just shown you. But programmatically, it's a little hard to do. Like, we have to look into your files to make sure that every time you link your file somewhere else, we need to track everything down. And now, as simple as Orgro might be looking to you, the thing is, what we try to do with Orgro is to make sure that your collection of notes remains consistent, whatever we do. An example, for instance. Like right now, I've told you about a file named foo and a file named bar. Let's say that for whatever reason, you decide to rename your file foo to something very original. Let's just say bar. So we actually have a way in Emacs, in Orgrom, I should say, when you modify the title at the top of the file, so we get foo, I've modified it with baz. You can see at the bottom that right now we haven't saved and we are still in the file foo.org. I'm going to save. And now what you see is a new name for the file. But you may ask, wait a second. In the other file, we had a link to this file. Does it mean that it's broken? Does it mean, does it mean sorry, that we cannot access the file anymore? But when we go there, begin to go in the index, so obviously, the actual description of the link hasn't been updated. But if I show you what goes on under the hood by showing you what is fontified, what is behind the content of the link, actually, it didn't work. And that's why you never present live, folks, because otherwise, you're just going to show problems with your software, and that's not good. So something must have gone on, obviously. But generally speaking, the file should have been updated Damn, I'm showing you a bug in my software. That's not very professional now, is it? But basically, to come back to the main ID, what we try to do with Orgrom is to make sure that everything remains consistent. We really much love the system of organization that is behind the Zettel Kasten method. Now, I was going, at this point of the presentation, basically, I wanted to go back to Firefox and show you more stuff, but it's likely that it's going to crash again. So I'm not going to tempt the devil, and I'm just going to continue talking to you like that. So the zettel Kasten method is a very organic way to write notes. And if you think, or I believe 
as all most users, we share quite a lot of features. And I'm out of time. I'm just going to take one more minute to answer this question that I'm asking myself anyway. But if you're anything like me, You've, you've been through many iterations of your workflow inside old mode. Do I keep all my professional stuff under one heading or do I create a separate file for this? You know, the, those types of questions on which you could ponder for many, many hours at night, generally when you have a tight deadline to be following. But what I've discovered by using Orgram for taking notes about my academic projects or by taking notes on, you know, anything worth writing about is that not having to worry about the structure of your files, just having to worry about atoms and links, it does wonder for the way you think about problems. It does wonder about your creativity, and it does wonder about your ability to take your thoughts, put them on a paper, and generally, you know, during this process, you realize, oh, maybe I do not know this concept as well as I should. But I've never had a system which brought me as much serendipity as this system. And for those who don't know, serendipity is the ability to come up with novel ideas on the spot contextually. So this was just a little primer on what Orgrom and the ZL Casting is about. Uh, in about 20 minutes, I'll be giving you a talk about the technical aspects of Orgrom, which I'm certain some of you will be very interested in. And Otherwise, I do have a YouTube channel where I try to um, record videos where I explain to you what the org, what Orgrim is about, what the method is about. And, and I'll just finish on this. I'm two minutes extra time, sorry. But um, we do know that a lot of people are interested in Orgrim. I mentioned at the very beginning of the presentation that uh, a lot of people discovered Emacs and Orgrim, and org mode even, through Orgrim. And we feel that we have a duty to introduce those people, this new pool of people, most of whom are acad academics, into the world of Emacs and into the world of free software. And right now, the thing is, we're not doing a particularly good job at writing manuals. I'm just going to try to stop sharing my screen because I'm nearly to the end. I'm just try sharing my Firefox windows if it allows me. No, it doesn't allow me, which is very good. That's why I won't have to to uh, screw things up. You are now but uh, we know that our manual is not fully up to date. But believe me, one of the key focus right now is making sure that within two to three months, we have a good tutorial for people to join. And we have good videos for people to get introduced to the topics we're covering. And that's me done. So thank you so much for listening. And now I'll be taking some questions. Thank you very much, Leo. Oh, thank uh, you. Cheers. We have, I think, about two minutes for questions. And I see a lot of them on the pad. Would you take them sure, off? So, yeah. Yep, I'm scrolling. I'm scrolling, uh, getting things yeah. done. That's Aldrich. Uh, uh, still scrolling. OK, Olgram. Oh, wow. OK, so we do have quite a lot of questions. So please excuse me if I'm answering your questions really fast, but I just want to make sure that I cover as much ground as possible. So what is the functionality of Olgram on link references? So basically, when you have a file, that is not linked anywhere. This function allows you to see, uh, let's say we have a file Emacs, and we've talked about Emacs in another note, but we haven't created a link. What this command do is that it looks into your folder for every mention of Emacs that is not linked to the note Emacs, and it prints all the results in a buffer so that you know, oh, OK, I've talked about Emacs here, but I didn't create a link. Do I want to create a link? That's it. So is it possible to use the backlinks features in regular old buffers? Right now, no, it is not possible. We are having a very controlled environment, which is, uh, I told you about the split box folder before. This is where we keep all the nodes. And the reason why we do this will be more evident when I go through the technical presentation, but uh, it's because of optimization. So I'll get back to you on that afterwards. Um, do you make all Groom database accessible across computers? Uh, no, I do not, because I'm only using my laptop. But plenty of people have had uh, a lot of success doing so, either by sharing the files via a sync thing or by any other me method. We have a section in the manual specifying how to do this. Uh, how do you discover tags links to add to a new Orgrim note? There is something that I didn't tell you about, which is called Orgrim Server, which is a magnificent way to uh, access visually 
the nodes that you have in your in your system, you'll have to go to the orgrum.com website and please go on our GitHub page and we show everything. And um, I hope what I've told you has excited you. So please go. Uh, maybe one more question, two more questions, just to make sure. Uh, is it possible to seamlessly link to other nodes with syntax instead of a key binding? Yes, we are working on this. Uh, this is a huge project that we're doing with Orgrum, which is called uh, Link UX. And we're trying to do something which is very close to Roam Research, which is the software we're using for inspiration for Orgrum. And uh, yes, there's, there are going to be ways to do this in the future. I'm going to give you a window of maybe three to four months. And one last question. Uh, good on you. Thank you. Well, thank you for, for this. Is there an easy way to export several selected nodes to, say, a LaTeX file? La LaTeX, yes. Uh, I mean, it's org mode. At the very core, it is org mode. So, you know, you don't, if you want to export to LaTeX file, you can. You just use the Ox LaTeX library, which you can access by pressing Control C, Control E for export. All right. Is it, uh, I believe I'm, it's all the time I had. I mean, can you confirm this? OK, so if you have more questions, don't worry. I'll be in chat. I'll be answering them. Uh, I'm also on, on uh, all the platforms we advertise on uh, on Orgrom. If you want to reach me, I'm really easy to reach. Our GitHub page is always open. So thank you all for the, all your questions and all your uh, energy about Orgrom. It is very exciting for me to, to see all this. But right now, I'll be ending off uh, the microphone, I should say, to Nora, who is going to talk to you about the academic way to use Orgrom. And I'll be back afterwards with a technical talk. OK, thank you. Thank you very much, Leo. See you later, guys.